Unix time, also known as POSIX time or Unix epoch time, is a system for describing a point in time. It is the number of seconds that have elapsed since 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time UTC, Thursday 1 January 1970, minus leap seconds. Every day is treated as if it contains exactly 86,400 seconds, so leap seconds are to be subtracted since the epoch. It is used widely in Unix-like and many other operating systems and file formats. However, Unix time is not a true representation of UTC, as a leap second in UTC shares the same Unix time as the second which came before it. Unix time may be checked on most Unix systems by typing date plus percent %s on the command line. On systems where the representation of Unix time is as a signed 32-bit number, the representation will end after the completion of 2,147,483,647 seconds from 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds on 1 January 1970, which will happen at 3 hours 14 minutes and 8 seconds on 19 January 2038 UTC, although exactly how many seconds that is from now is not known because of unpredictable leap seconds. This is referred to as the year 2038 problem where the 32-bit signed Unix time will overflow and will take the actual count to negative. <laughs> <laughs> Definition Two layers of encoding make up Unix time. The first layer encodes a point in time as a scalar real number which represents the number of seconds that have passed since the beginning of 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time Thursday 1 January 1970. The second layer encodes that number as a sequence of bits or decimal digits. As a standard with UTC, this article labels days using the Gregorian calendar, and counts times within each day in hours, minutes, and seconds. Some of the examples also show International Atomic Time another time scheme, which uses the same seconds and is displayed in the same format as UTC, but in which every day is exactly 86,400 seconds long, gradually losing synchronization with the Earth's rotation at a rate of roughly one second per year. <laughs> Encoding time as a number Unix time is a single signed number which increments every second, without requiring the calculations to determine year, month, day of month, hour and minute required for intelligibility to humans. The Unix epoch is the time 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time on 1 January 1970. There is a problem with this definition, in that UTC did not exist in its current form until 1972, this issue is discussed below. For brevity, the remainder of this section uses ISO 8601 date and time format, in which the Unix epoch is the 1st of January 1970 t 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds z. The Unix time number is 0 at the Unix epoch, and increases by exactly 86,400 per day since the epoch. Thus the 16th of September 2004 t0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds z 12677 days after the epoch is represented by the unix time number 12677 times 86400 topic 1095292800 this can be extended backwards from the epoch too, using negative numbers, thus 4 October 1957 t 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds z, 4472 days before the epoch, is represented by the Unix time number minus 4472 times 86400. Minus 386,380,800. Within each day, the Unix time number is calculated as in the preceding paragraph at midnight UTC 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds Z, and increases by exactly 1 per second since midnight. 
Thus, the 16th of September 2004 T17, 55 minutes 43 seconds and 54 milliseconds Z, 64,543.54 seconds since midnight on the first day in the example above, is represented by the Unix time number 1095292800 plus 64,543.54 equals 1095357343 equals 1095357343 on dates before the epoch the number still increases, thus becoming less negative, as time moves forward. Because Unix time is based on the Unix epoch, it is sometimes referred to as epoch time. <laughs> Leap seconds The above scheme means that on a normal UTC day, which has a duration of 86,400 seconds, the Unix time number changes in a continuous manner across midnight. For example, at the end of the day used in the examples above, the time representations progress as follows. When a leap second occurs, the UTC day is not exactly 86,400 seconds long and the Unix time number which always increases by exactly 86,400 each day experiences a discontinuity. At the end of a day with a negative leap second, which has not yet occurred, the Unix time number would jump up by 1 to the start of the next day. During a positive leap second at the end of a day, which occurs about every year and a half on average, the Unix time number increases continuously into the next day during the leap second and then at the end of the leap second jumps back by one returning to the start of the next day. For example, this is what happened on strictly conforming POSIX.1 systems at the end of 1998. Unix time numbers are repeated in the second immediately following a positive leap second. The Unix time number 915148800.50 is thus ambiguous, it can refer either to the instant in the middle of the leap second, or to the instant one second later, half a second after midnight UTC. In the theoretical case when a negative leap second occurs, no ambiguity is caused, but instead there is a range of Unix time numbers that do not refer to any point in time at all. A Unix clock is often implemented with a different type of positive leap second handling associated with the network time protocol NTP. This yields a system that does not conform to the POSIX standard. See the section below concerning NTP for details. When dealing with periods that do not encompass a UTC leap second, the difference between two Unix time numbers is equal to the duration in seconds of the period between the corresponding points in time. This is a common computational technique. However, where leap seconds occur, such calculations give the wrong answer. In applications where this level of accuracy is required, it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds when dealing with Unix times, and it is often preferable to use a different time encoding that does not suffer from this problem. A Unix time number is easily converted back into UTC by taking the quotient and modulus of the Unix time number, modulo 86400. The quotient is the number of days since the epoch, and the modulus is the number of seconds since midnight UTC on that day. If given a Unix time number that is ambiguous due to a positive leap second, this algorithm interprets it as the time just after midnight. It never generates a time that is during a leap second. If given a Unix time number that is invalid due to a negative leap second, it generates an equally invalid UTC time. If these conditions are significant, it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds to detect them. Non-synchronous network time protocol-based variant Commonly a MILS-style Unix clock is implemented with leap second handling not synchronous with the change of the Unix time number. The time number initially decreases where a leap should have occurred, and then it leaps to the correct time one second after the leap. This makes implementation easier, and is described by Mill's paper. This is what happens across a positive leap second. This can be decoded properly by paying attention to the leap second state variable, which unambiguously indicates whether the leap has been performed yet. The state variable change is synchronous with the leap. A similar situation arises with a negative leap second, where the second that is skipped is slightly too late. Very briefly the system shows a nominally impossible time number, but this can be detected by the time underscore del state and corrected. In this type of system the Unix time number violates POSIX around both types of leap second. 
Collecting the leap second state variable along with the time number allows for unambiguous decoding, so the correct POSIX time number can be generated if desired, or the full UTC time can be stored in a more suitable format. The decoding logic required to cope with this style of Unix clock would also correctly decode a hypothetical POSIX conforming clock using the same interface. This would be achieved by indicating the time underscore in state during the entirety of an inserted leap second, then indicating time underscore wait during the entirety of the following second while repeating the seconds count. This requires synchronous leap second handling. This is probably the best way to express UTC time in Unix clock form, via a Unix interface, when the underlying clock is fundamentally untroubled by leap seconds. Tie-based variant Another, much rarer, non-conforming variant of Unix timekeeping involves encoding tie rather than UTC, some Linux systems are configured this way. Because tie has no leap seconds, and every tie day is exactly 86,400 seconds long, this encoding is actually a pure linear count of seconds elapsed since 1 January 1970 t 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds tie. This makes time interval arithmetic much easier. Time values from these systems do not suffer the ambiguity that strictly conforming POSIX systems or NTP-driven systems have. In these systems it is necessary to consult a table of leap seconds to correctly convert between UTC and the pseudo-UNIX time representation. This resembles the manner in which time zone tables must be consulted to convert to and from civil time. The YANA time zone database includes leap second information, and the sample code available from the same source uses that information to convert between tie based time stamps and local time. Conversion also runs into definitional problems prior to the 1972 commencement of the current form of UTC. See section UTC basis below. This tie-based system, despite its superficial resemblance, is not Unix time. It encodes times with values that differ by several seconds from the POSIX time values, and does not have the simple mathematical relationship to UTC that is mandated by POSIX. Topic representing the number A Unix time number can be represented in any form capable of representing numbers. In some applications the number is simply represented textually as a string of decimal digits, raising only trivial additional problems. However, certain binary representations of Unix times are particularly significant. The Unix time underscore t data type that represents a point in time is, on many platforms, a signed integer, traditionally of 32 bits but see below, directly encoding the Unix time number as described in the preceding section. Being 32 bits means that it covers a range of about 136 years in total. The minimum representable time is Friday 13 December 1901, and the maximum representable time is Tuesday 19 January 2038. One second after 3 hours 14 minutes and 7 seconds coordinated universal time 19 January 2038 this representation will overflow. This milestone is anticipated with a mixture of amusement and dread, see year 2038 problem. In some newer operating systems, time underscore t has been widened to 64 bits. This expands the times representable by approximately 293 billion years in both directions, which is over 20 times the present age of the universe per direction. There was originally some controversy over whether the Unix time underscore t should be signed or unsigned. If unsigned, its range in the future would be doubled, postponing the 32-bit overflow by 68 years. However, it would then be incapable of representing times prior to the epoch. The consensus is for time underscore t to be signed, and this is the usual practice. The software development platform for version 6 of the QNX operating system has an unsigned 32-bit time underscore t, though older releases used a signed type. The POSIX and Open Group Unix specifications include the C standard library, which includes the time types and functions defined in the header file. The ISO C standard states that time underscore T must be an arithmetic type, but does not mandate any specific type or encoding for it. POSIX requires time underscore T to be an integer type, but does not mandate that it be signed or unsigned. Unix has no tradition of directly representing non-integer Unix time numbers as binary fractions. 
Instead, times with sub-second precision are represented using composite data types that consist of two integers, the first being a time underscore t the integral part of the unix time, and the second being the fractional part of the time number in millionths in struct timeval or billionths in struct timespec. These structures provide a decimal-based fixed-point data format, which is useful for some applications, and trivial to convert for others. UTC basis The present form of UTC, with leap seconds, is defined only from 1 January 1972 onwards. Prior to that, since 1 January 1961 there was an older form of UTC in which not only were there occasional time steps, which were by non-integer numbers of seconds, but also the UTC second was slightly longer than the SI second, and periodically changed to continuously approximate the Earth's rotation. Prior to 1961 there was no UTC, and prior to 1958 there was no widespread atomic timekeeping. In these eras, some approximation of GMT based directly on the Earth's rotation was used instead of an atomic timescale. The precise definition of Unix time as an encoding of UTC is only uncontroversial when applied to the present form of UTC. The Unix epoch predating the start of this form of UTC does not affect its use in this era. The number of days from the 1st of January 1970, the Unix epoch, to the 1st of January 1972, the start of UTC, is not in question, and the number of days is all that is significant to Unix time. The meaning of Unix time values below plus 63072000, i.e., prior to the 1st of January 1972, is not precisely defined. The basis of such Unix times is best understood to be an unspecified approximation of UTC. Computers of that era rarely had clocks set sufficiently accurately to provide meaningful sub-second timestamps in any case. Unix time is not a suitable way to represent times prior to 1972 in applications requiring sub-second precision. Such applications must, at least, define which form of UT or GMT they use. As of 2009, the possibility of ending the use of leap seconds in civil time is being considered. A likely means to execute this change is to define a new time scale, called international time, that initially matches UTC but thereafter has no leap seconds, thus remaining at a constant offset from time. If this happens, it is likely that Unix time will be prospectively defined in terms of this new time scale, instead of UTC. Uncertainty about whether this will occur makes prospective Unix time no less predictable than it already is. If UTC were simply to have no further leap seconds the result would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> Command line In Unix-like operating systems, date is the command which will print or set the current time. History The earliest versions of Unix time had a 32-bit integer incrementing at a rate of 60 Hz, which was the rate of the system clock on the hardware of the early Unix systems. The value 60 Hz still appears in some software interfaces as a result. The epoch also differed from the current value. The first edition Unix programmer's manual dated 3 November 1971 defines the Unix time as the time since 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds, 1 January 1971, measured in sixtieths of a second." The user manual also commented that, "...the chronologically minded user will note that 2 asterisk asterisk 32 sixtieths of a second is only about 2.5 years." Because of this limited range, the epoch was redefined more than once, before the rate was changed to 1 Hz and the epoch was set to its present value of 1 January 1970 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds coordinated universal time. This yielded a range of about 136 years, though with more than half the range in the past see discussion of signness above. As indicated by the definition quoted above, the Unix time scale was originally intended to be a simple linear representation of time elapsed since an epoch. However, there was no consideration of the details of time scales, and it was implicitly assumed that there was a simple linear time scale already available and agreed upon. The first edition manual's definition does not even specify which time zone is used. 
Several later problems, including the complexity of the present definition, result from Unix time having been defined gradually by usage rather than fully defined from the outset. When POSIX.1 was written, the question arose of how to precisely define time underscore t in the face of leap seconds. The POSIX committee considered whether Unix time should remain, as intended, a linear count of seconds since the epoch, at the expense of complexity in conversions with civil time or a representation of civil time, at the expense of inconsistency around leap seconds. Computer clocks of the era were not sufficiently precisely set to form a precedent one way or the other. The POSIX committee was swayed by arguments against complexity in the library functions, and firmly defined the Unix time in a simple manner in terms of the elements of UTC time. This definition was so simple that it did not even encompass the entire leap year rule of the Gregorian calendar, and would make 2100 a leap year. The 2001 edition of POSIX.1 rectified the faulty leap year rule in the definition of Unix time, but retained the essential definition of Unix time as an encoding of UTC rather than a linear time scale. Since the mid-1990s, computer clocks have been routinely set with sufficient precision for this to matter, and they have most commonly been set using the UTC-based definition of Unix time. This has resulted in considerable complexity in Unix implementations, and in the network time protocol, to execute steps in the Unix time number whenever leap seconds occur. Non-Gregorian calendars Notable events in Unix time Unix enthusiasts have a history of holding time underscore t parties to celebrate significant values of the Unix time number. These are directly analogous to the New Year celebrations that occur at the change of year in many calendars. As the use of Unix time has spread, so has the practice of celebrating its milestones. Usually it is time values that are round numbers in decimal that are celebrated, following the Unix convention of viewing time underscore t values in decimal. Among some groups round binary numbers are also celebrated, such as plus 230 which occurred at 13 hours 37 minutes and 4 seconds coordinated universal time on Saturday 10 January 2004. The events that these celebrate are typically described as n seconds since the Unix epoch, but this is inaccurate. As discussed above, due to the handling of leap seconds in Unix time, the number of seconds elapsed since the Unix epoch is slightly greater than the Unix time number for times later than the epoch. At 1 hour 46 minutes and 40 seconds coordinated universal time on Sunday 9 September 2001, the Unix Millennium Unix time number 1 billion was celebrated. The name Millennium is a portmanteau of billion and millennium. Some programs which stored timestamps using a text representation encountered sorting errors, as in a text sort times after the turnover, starting with a one-digit, erroneously sorted before earlier times starting with a nine-digit. Affected programs included the popular Usenet reader node and email client K-Mail, part of the KDE desktop environment. Such bugs were generally cosmetic in nature and quickly fixed once problems became apparent. The problem also affected many Filtrix document format filters provided with Linux versions of WordPerfect. A patch was created by the user community to solve this problem, since Corel no longer sold or supported that version of the program. At 1 hour 58 minutes and 31 seconds coordinated universal time on Friday 18 March 2005, Unix time reached 1,111,111,111 seconds. A celebration was held on IRC in the Freenode channel number 1,111,111,111. South Korean enthusiasts called it Decimal One Day. At 23 hours 31 minutes and 30 seconds coordinated universal time on Friday 13 February 2009, the decimal representation of Unix time reached 1,234,567,890 seconds like the number rho on a keyboard. In some parts of the world, this day fell on Friday 13 in the Gregorian calendar, or Saturday 14 February, for locations from France East to the international dateline. Google celebrated this with a Google Doodle. 
Parties and other celebrations were held around the world, among various technical subcultures, to celebrate the 1,234,567,890th second. At 3 hours 33 minutes and 20 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Wednesday 18 May 2033, the Unix time value will equal 2 billion seconds. At 6 hours 28 minutes and 16 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Thursday 7 February 2036, Network Time Protocol will loop over to the next epoch, as the 32-bit time stamp value used in NTP unsigned, but based on 1 January 1900 will overflow. This date is close to the following date because the 136-year range of a 32-bit integer number of seconds is close to twice the 70-year offset between the two epochs. At 3 hours 14 minutes and 8 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Tuesday 19 January 2038, 32-bit versions of the Unix time stamp will cease to work, as it will overflow the largest value that can be held in a signed 32-bit number 7FFFFFF16 or 2147483647. Before this moment, software using 32-bit time stamps will need to adopt a new convention for time stamps, and file formats using 32-bit time stamps will need to be changed to support larger time stamps or a different epoch. If unchanged, the next second will be incorrectly interpreted as 20 hours 45 minutes and 52 seconds Friday 13 December 1901 UTC. At 5 hours 20 minutes and 0 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Saturday 24 January 2065, the Unix time value will equal 3 billion seconds. At 6 hours 28 minutes and 15 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Sunday 7 February 2106, the Unix time will reach FFFFFFF 16 or 4294967295 seconds which, for systems that hold the time on 32-bit unsigned integers, is the maximum attainable. For some of these systems, the next second will be incorrectly interpreted as 0 hours 0 minutes and 0 seconds Thursday 1 January 1970 UTC. For other systems there will be an overflow error with unpredictable results. At 15 hours 30 minutes and 8 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on Sunday 4 December 292,277,026,596 should that date happen, 64-bit versions of the Unix time stamp would cease to work, as it will overflow the largest value that can be held in a signed 64-bit number. This is nearly 22 times the estimated current age of the universe, which is 1.37 times 1,010 years 13.7 billion. In literature and calendrics Werner Vinge's novel A Deepness in the Sky describes a spacefaring trading civilization thousands of years in the future that still uses the Unix epoch. The programmer archaeologist responsible for finding and maintaining usable code in mature computer systems first believes that the epic refers to the time when man first walked on the moon but then realizes that it is the zero second of one of humankind's first computer operating systems topic see also system time Timeline of the Far Future Epic Reference Date